assalamu alaikum we have reached the second part of chapter 6 epithelial disorders we have done till acanthosis in the first part and now we'll be starting with nicotine stomatitis so nicotine stomatitis what is nicotine stomatitis as the name suggests it is the inflammation of the mouth oral region due to the use of nicotine so this this will be present in smokers mostly smokers okay diffuse wide change of palate buccal mucosa these are the two sites caused by hyperkeratosis and acanthosis if you recall hyperkeratosis and acanthosis give a whitish appearance Exhibiting small dimpled nodules. They exhibit small nodules, which I will show you, around the minor salivary duct opening. There are minor salivary duct openings on the palate, on the buccal mucosa. So, around them, there will be nodular formation in sp pipe smokers. Okay. So, as you can see in this, if you see, if you zoom, nodules yeah. around the minor salivary ducts okay what are the clinical features these areas will be whiter than normal due to hyperkeratosis and acanthosis they will also have a fissured or wrinkled appearance Okay, there will be multiple small circular papules and tiny umbilicated red centers on the heart palate. There will be the papules and they will have a red center as in these papules and you can also see many other images which will show you these. Okay, next, uh, what will the histopathology show us? Histopathology will show hyperkeratosis, acanthosis of the surface epithelium, then the salivary glands. Uh, the duct of the minor salivary glands will be dilated and there will be squamous metaplasia of the ductal lining. The lining of the ducts will be uh, showing squamous metaplasia. Then the connective tissue adjacent to the salivary gland duct shows chronic inflammation. There will be inflammation um, in the connective tissue. Rapidly resolves if smoking is stopped. This is a... Um, this does not require treatment you just need to stop smoking and the condition resolves um, can lead to squamous cell carcinoma of fascial and retromolar regions of the mouth and upper and lower respiratory tract this can lead to squamous cell carcinoma if you see here you've seen this picture if you see this picture the histopathology You will see small nodules which are widened, excretory ducts of the minor salivary glands, and then squamous, and you can also see squamous metaplasia of the cuboidal cells here. Okay. Perforative verrucous leukoplakia. What does verrucous mean? Verrucous means like a wart, okay, a warty area, <sighs> like a papilla or a wart. So PVL occurs in older patients and the ratio from of women to men will be 4 is to 1. That means women have a slight prediction to PVL. Multiple areas of diffuse leukoplakia will be seen with both smooth and warty areas okay and it will happen in multiple areas not just one area of the oral cavity and there will be leukoplakia and it will appear white and both smooth and warty it slowly grows but progresses into car squamous cell carcinoma it can become malignant okay if you see there is a picture let's see the picture here
is diffuse white leukoplaque equation. It appears warty and sometimes it appears smooth also, but here it appears warty. Okay. This is hyperkeratosis, thickened keratin layer, uh, verrucous keratosis, warty. It has these warts, verrucous carcinoma, and then it becomes squamous cell carcinoma. Okay. Moving on to epithelial atrophy, the first condition we will study is oral submucous fibrosis. Oral submucous fibrosis resembles scleroderma and but this disease only occurs in India, Pakistan, Burma, China, Thailand, Nepal, Vietnam, areas Asian countries where hot peppers, chilies, betel nut chewing, tobacco use is more as compared to the rest of the world. Okay. You will see atrophic epithelium um, which is at increased risk of progressing to malignancy. Okay. Let us learn what are the clinical features and the um, histopathology. In the clinical features, the sites which are most involved are the buccal mucosa, the lips, soft palate and pharynx. These areas are symmetrically affected, like both, both halves will be affected. Progressively becomes firm and pale. Okay, this lesion will become firmer and paler and progressive stiffness of the cheeks will cause inability to open mouth and this is called Trismus. This inability to open your mouth to the full extent is called trismus. And this will happen because the cheeks will be stiff due to um, excessive use of betel nut or chili peppers or other uh, factors which were named previously. This will cause um, this will cause a lot of problems. People, the patients will not be able to eat properly or chew properly and they will have a lot of difficulty. Uh, pale and atrophic oral mucosa. The oral mucosa will become atrophic due to um, lesser use and also due to these factors. The histopathology will show us um, different stages. First stage is the earliest stage where there is uh, the submucosal connective tissue will be chronic uh, inflammated, chronically inflammated. Then there will be diffuse progressive fibrosis um, and atrophy of the overlying epithelium. This will lead to a greater tendency to develop hyperkeratosis and epithelial dysplasia. Then the epithelial dysplasia will further become squamous cell carcinoma. Thus, this condition is called a precancerous condition okay because it may form squamous cell carcinoma see oral submucous fibrosis here this is a buccal mucosa it is pale and firm and there is fibrosis of the connective tissue which is usually loose and soft but it has become firm and fibro fibrosis has occurred. And in the histopath, we can see um, the overlying epithelium is thinned. It has been atrophied and the submucosa is dense, uh, fibrous connective tissue and there is very less amount of um, blood vessels. You cannot see a lot of blood vessels here. Okay. Okay, now we are going to study carcinoma in C2. This is the most severe stage of epithelial dysplasia. It involves the entire thickness of the epithelium, the basement membrane, but the basement membrane remains intact and no invasion occurs into the connective tissue. 
So this is the basic definition of carcinoma in C2 and it is also the difference between carcinoma in C2 and squamous cell carcinoma. If you see this is epithelium, this is the connective tissue and this is the basement membrane. So in carcinoma in C2, it is the most severe stage of dysplasia. This will, the epithelium will be dysplastic. The whole entire thickness of the epithelium will be uh, dysplastic, but the basement membrane will remain intact. Okay, if this basement membrane is breached, squamous cell carcinoma will occur. So over here in carcinoma in C2, the basement membrane will remain intact. Here. This is thickened epithelium in atrophic areas of inflamed connective tissue. They are large vascular spaces, but the basement membrane is intact. Now we will be studying erythroplakia. What does this mean? Erythro means red and plakia means a patch. It is also called erythroplasia. So red patch or red plaque. Clinical features will be, it will be asymptomatic. It will occur in smokers. The most common sites will be the floor of the mouth, the lateral and ventral surfaces of the tongue, soft palate and the buccal mucosa. If you See speckled erythroplakia, it means it has interspersed focal white plaques between them. Like there is a red area but there are interspersed freckles of, um, or speckles of white patches. Okay. The histopathology will show you 60 to 90 percent uh, are uh, epithelial dysplasias um, or carcinoma in C2 or squamous cell carcinoma. It appears as erythroplakia, but when you uh, do the biopsy, you go for the histopath, you will see that they are dysplasias or pre-malignant or malignant conditions. Secondly, you will see a deep red coloration. Erythroplakia means a red coloration. Why? Firstly, it lacks the surface layer of keratin. The keratin uh, is a protective layer. It protects uh, and also gives um, a normal color. But if the keratin is more, it will be whitish in color and here the surface layer of keratin is lacking. That is why the underlying vasculature will show its color. So the deep red coloration will be shown. Secondly, the epithelial layers are also greatly reduced in thickness. Thirdly, the size and the number of the vascular structures increases in response to the inflammation. There will be angiogenesis. Due to inflammation, you will find new blood vessels here associated with thinned and neoplastic epithelium. So, uh, all of these will uh, result in deep red coloration. If you see here, this is the right anterior floor of the mouth. And it is a deep red color. And here you can see speckled white plaques between the red uh, coloration. This is called speckled er erythroplakia. Next, we'll move on to malignant epithelial neoplasms. First one is obviously the squamous cell carcinoma. It is also called epidermoid carcinoma. It is a malignant neoplasm. Um, it is similar to carcinoma in C2 but except for one thing which I have already told you. This plastic epithelial cells breach the basement membrane and invade into the connective tissue. This can also arise de novo from the stratified squamous epithelium which is on top of the connective tissue and it can also have a lot of other causes like um, conditions which we get previously. So 3% of all the cancers in males is oral cancer or squamous cell carcinoma and 2% die. 2% of all the cancers in males, uh, females is squamous cell carcinoma of which uh, half of them die. 
so the survival rate is 50% and this is the most common oral cancer and its sites are the lower lip, the lateral borders of the tongue and the floor of the mouth. There are a few carcinogenic factors such as smoked tobacco in cigarettes, cigars and pipe, smokeless tobacco such as snuff, uh, betel nut, quid, chewing tobacco and actinic radiation which is UV radiation from sunlight, um, infections such as human papilloma virus, Epstein-Barr virus, um, hum human immunodeficiency virus, Candida albicans and Treponema pallidum, um, chronic irritation due to ill-fitting dentures or use of pipes and alcohol com consumption. The histopathology will show us invasion into the underlying connective tissue. The dysplastic epithelial cells will breach the basement membrane. Inherent potential of malignant cells to erode the lymphatic and blood vessel walls to metastasize. So as you know, uh, in tumors and cancers, the malignant cells metastasize to other areas. So this is, they have a potential inside, um, they have an inherent potential instilled in them. To, they erode the lymphatic and blood vessel walls and they reach other locations in the body. There are three types of uh, carcinomas, well differentiated, moderately differentiated and poorly differentiated. In the well differentiated ones, the tumor exhibit some features of maturation from the basal cells. The basal cells appear mature, matured and they produce significant amounts of keratin, such as in the lower lip. Uh, mostly the carcinomas of the lower lip are well differentiated. Secondly, uh, moderately differentiated tumors produce little or no keratin and the epithelium is still recognizable as stratified squamous, such as lateral borders of the tongue experience uh, carcinomas which are moderately differentiated. And in poorly differentiated tumors, there is no keratin produced and there is very little resemblance to the stratified squamous epithelium. Thus, we see the lack of normal architecture and there is no cohesiveness between the cells. The cells are separated and cellular abnormalities also occur. And this is seen in the tonsillar region. The sites of squamous cell carcinoma are the lower lip. Mostly, they, this happens in the lower lip, 35%. Lateral and ventral tongue 25%, floor of the mouth 20%, soft palate 15%, gingival or alveolar ridges 4% and in the buccal mucosa only 1%. As you can see here, tobacco is a carcinogenic factor. If you place a tobacco pouch, if the patients have placed tobacco pouches over a long period of time, the chronic friction and the tobacco will cause this is called a tobacco chewer's pouch, this lesion. is It is present in the posterior vestibule and the buccal mucosa. It is characterized by wrinkles and leukoplakic appearance and it, um, it has a thickened layer of orthokeratin and acanthosis and undulating surface which you can see in the histopathology. This is a tobacco chewer's pouch. Actinic radiation will cause the lower lip to be puffy and the distinct vermilion border will be lost and it will be mottled and leukoplakic and had uh, and will have atrophic areas. Uh, the histopathology will show hyperorthokeratosis, epithelial distro uh, atrophy, dysplasia and basophilic degeneration of collagen and telangiectasia. This is well differentiated squamous cell carcinoma. It will show uh, irregularly elongated retipegs and uh, in which will be invading the connective tissue here and they can also contain keratin pearls. These are accumulation of keratin. So this is well differentiated squamous cell carcinoma. In moderately differentiated squamous cell carcinoma, you, uh, in the histopathology you will see an abrupt line of demarcation between the normal epithelium and the invasive neoplastic squamous epithelium. There will be loss of the cohesiveness between the cells here, look, here it is 
um, demarcated but here they are not clearly demarcated they are also non keratinized squamous epithelium here in poorly differentiated squamous cell carcinoma the you can see hyperchromatism and pleomorphism of the cells and very um, distinct lack of architecture of the cells sites this oh, intraoral horseshoe shaped lesion uh, area is the most prone to the development of squamous cell carcinoma due to the um, drainage of the saliva the anterior fore floor of the mouth the lateral borders of the tongue tonsillar pillars and lateral soft palate this is a squamous cell carcinoma of the lower lip this is a squamous cell carcinoma of the lateral tongue this is the squamous cell carcinoma of the anterior floor of the mouth this is a squamous cell carcinoma of the left soft palate it also shows areas of speckled erythroplakia this is the squamous cell carcinoma of the gingiva and alveolar ridges this is the squamous cell carcinoma of the buccal mucosa Moving on to melanoma, melanoma is a skin lesion which has four basic types, uh, superficial spreading, lentigo maligna, acral lentiginous and nodular. It occurs in sun exposed areas in fair skinned people the most. Um, the median age is 53 but it occurs mostly in young aged men. Uh, the most common sites are the heart palate and the maxillary gingiva. Uh, the skin and mucosal melanoma uh, represents as a dark brown black or bluish black lesion it is it is also sometimes non pigmented so it is called amelanotic which appears as reddish in the early macular pattern there is a macular nodular um, sort of a pattern there are two stages the initial the or phases initial radial growth phase in which the neoplastic cells they spread laterally and they are confined to the surface epithelium they just spread this is the epithelium and this is the connective tissue so they spread laterally but in the second vertical growth phase the neoplastic cells they invade the site of the connective tissue so the neoplastic cells invade and populate the connective tissue as well this is superficial spreading melanoma this is a brown black lesion with irregular margins and multiple satellite lesions here these are satellite lesions which are a bit further away from the main lesion uh, the location is in the anterior palate which is very common this is superficial spreading melanoma the melanoma cells are along the lower aspect of the retipex this is the melanophage and this is the epithelium microscopic features of a lesion before the vertical growth stage invasion reveal the proliferation of abnormal melanocytes within the basal cell layer producing a nodular pattern of the tips of the retipex the retipex show nodular patterns so there are melanoma cells or melanophages melanocytes present along the lower aspect of the retipex which caused nodularity the dark coloration of most lesions is due to the greatly increased number of atypical melanocytes and the resulting excess melanin production so melanin production occurs and that's why we can see that there is a dark coloration the melanin is usually contained within melanophages located in both the upper layers of the epithelium and underlying connective tissue 